Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're doing a recipe from the Arizona cookbook because I just got back from Arizona. I wasn't gonna do a recipe this week, but then one of my friends was like, you should do a recipe. And then also I have horrific travel stories, which are funny if you didn't have to live through them. The recipe that we're doing today is cheese enchiladas. However, I will be adding some beans because your boy likes protein. And the recipe in here has cheese enchiladas and then the enchilada sauce. And I was just gonna do that because they're both super simple looking. However, the enchilada sauce calls for an ingredient called chili sauce. And I know that there's like sweet chili sauce. I'm assuming that's not this because that's typically more kind of like Asian food, not uh, like Mexican enchilada? Or is that more Tex-Mex? I don't know if that is a traditional thing or not. So I don't know, I'll have to Google that and then future Aaron will, will, will correct me. But it calls for chili sauce, which I was like, okay, we'll just look for that. Couldn't find it. I, it's just, I probably should have just bought enchilada sauce because I feel like based on the other ingredients in it, which are almost nothing, it effectively is the whole enchilada sauce for it. Then it's the whole enchilada. There we go, it's late. I'm, I'm not gonna be very witty today. But <laughs> instead, I just found a recipe online to make my own enchilada sauce, so we're gonna go with that. I will be doubling that recipe. I'll put the link in the description as always. The enchilada recipe from here, I'm not gonna put anywhere because it's just onions, beans, cheese, and I mean, it's, it's an artisanal blend of cheeses that we have here, you know four cheese blend, specially handcrafted. It's just a bag of shredded Mexican cheese. It's nothing fancy. So hopefully, it can, literally all it says is just half pound of grated cheese. So it's not, not uh, anything too crazy going on there. But that's kind of the recipe. We'll, we'll go through the ingredients mostly for the sauce because I just literally went through the ingredients for the enchiladas themselves, but story time. So, Going out to Arizona, had some bumps in the road. Uh, storms in Dallas, which caused the flight to have to circle for a bit. And then we ran out of gas. So they're like, well, we're gonna have to go pull off in Oklahoma and park there for a bit. And which, I mean, little fun part of that is the flight attendant, don't know if it was a joke, don't know if she just actually mispronounced something. But instead of saying Oklahoma, she said Oklahoma. And everybody on the flight who was very grumpy because it's been like two hours, I think, past when we we're supposed to land in Dallas at this point, that we're landing in uh, Oklahoma. You know, everybody had a little chuckle. And then we spent like two hours there, <laughs> got over to Dallas. So we're like five hours behind at this point. Then I race across the airport to get on the last flight to go to Arizona. And the annoying part of all of that is I paid $200 more to get there at the same time as my parents instead of a later flight, which I ended up getting on that later flight because that was the last one and having still spent the $200 extra. So whatever moral that story is, but I thought, okay, we had the issue with flying right out the gate, we're, we're smooth sailing. So Arizona itself was great. Hiking, weather, all that amazing. Coming back, once again, had storms. <laughs> so I'm just, don't ever travel with me. This is probably the moral of that story. But coming back, uh, the, it was so bad that they actually closed the whole Dallas airport. So I got stuck in Arizona and they had delayed the flights like all day. And then at the very end, they're like, we're just gonna cancel it. Which I'm like super. That you know gives us a lot of time to prepare and readjust our schedule, because after waiting in a line of all the disgruntled customers getting to the front of the line, which had a moment that was also kind of funny, because the person is like helping everybody, and they're probably told to say this, but they were like, "Hi, how how's your day going?" And I was just like, "Not great." <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's probably just one of those things where you're just like, your mind uh, goes into kind of cruise control and you're just like, shouldn't have said that. Uh, I get up there and the guy's like, okay, you have two options. Option one is you rent a car, drive to Phoenix, catch a fight, flight from Phoenix because it's a larger hub, you have more options there. Wasn't thrilled with that because there were flights throughout the day that were going to Phoenix that if they had told us this a little bit sooner, I could have taken a flight there 
instead of having to drive there. But you know, that's neither here nor there. And then the second option, which mind you, this is a Thursday. They're like, your second option is we rebook you on a flight from here to Dallas to the new, you know, final destination on Sunday. And I'm like, well, to me, it sounds like really only one option <laughs> because both of them, it's, it's weather related. So they're not paying for anything. They're not paying for the rental car. They're not paying for hotels. One option is to pay for three days of hotel rooms on my own. I'm not doing that option. I go with option one and a couple next to me was like, well, we're also doing that same thing. So like, if you want to kind of pull our efforts for the rental car, that'll be uh, chill. And so then I had the decision of stranger danger or paying full price for a rental car. And I was like, I'm gonna go with the stranger danger. So <laughs> I'm like, sure, like I'll, I'll, I'll ride with you guys. Obviously I told people that I'm gonna be riding with them. It wasn't just blindly going with people. The, it's, it was a couple and the guy was like, okay, so it's gonna be really easy to remember our names. Uh, my name's Aaron and her name's Aaron. So if you just call out Aaron, one of us will, will, will respond. And I'm like, well, that's funny because it's gonna be really easy to remember not my name because it's also Aaron. So that was kind of funny, a little silver lining, the, the Aaron trio on a road trip together. Um, I mean, like, what are the chances of that? <laughs> that all, you know, so then we had to now rent a car and whatnot. And then that led to like, our flight wasn't leaving the West Coast until 11.30 at night. So then I didn't get back to the East Coast until 7 a.m. And then I had to catch another connector flight. So I didn't get home until like, almost noon and I probably got up two and a half, maybe three hours of sleep that night. I was not a happy camper. So I was gonna kind of take this week off, but I figured I should tell that story before it's like really old. And I don't know, it just, and then it's like the Arizona recipe. I, I felt like the longer I waited then it's just kind of, well, I guess last year I did Arizona April. So I could have waited. Oh, well. It's too late now. I mean, it is late, but it's <laughs> too late to give up. All right, so why don't we run through the ingredients and then we'll get into cooking. Some chicken stock. Well, I think it calls for broth, but I had stock, so we're going with that. Apple cider vinegar, olive oil, tomato paste, flour, and then a spice blend, which consists of a little bit of cinnamon, garlic powder, oregano, cumin, pepper, salt, and literally my light just died. So I'm gonna have to go plug that back in. But the last ingredient is chili powder. For the enchilada sauce, we have to make that first, obviously, because you need the enchilada sauce before you can make the enchiladas. The first step of that is going to be to heat oil. Sounds like a boring step, but the recipe does say that it's gonna take a few minutes because it has to get to a fairly high temperature. And the way that you can test if it's ready is you sprinkle in a little bit of flour and if it sizzles, you're good to go. Next, now that the oil is hot, is we're going to be adding in the flour and the spices to that oil and then kind of stir it up constantly for about a minute. Very similar idea to a roux. Now that we have the kind of spice roux thing going on, we're going to slowly add in the chicken broth and also the tomato paste. And now that everything's kind of all mixed up, we want to let it simmer for five to seven minutes until it thickens up a little bit. And next is just to remove it from heat and then add in the apple cider vinegar. Okay, so enchilada sauce is done. Next up is just make enchiladas. Not a whole lot of breakdown here. Uh, it's just gonna be kind of assemble everything and then we'll be good to go. 
So for the assembly, we're going to dip the tortillas in the enchilada sauce, and then we're gonna add the fillings into the enchilada, and then kind of roll it up, put it in a pan, and then line that all up. And then after we kind of assemble everything, pour the remaining enchilada sauce on top, cover with cheese, and you're done. Now that the enchiladas are all assembled, we're gonna throw that in the oven. It doesn't say a temperature, so I'm gonna go with 350 because everything's effectively cooked already. And then we're just gonna do it for 15 minutes. And then we have enchiladas. All right, so here we have it. I have the enchiladas scooped out. It's, I mean, it, it doesn't look great because I mean, enchiladas are a bit of a messy, dish in and of itself, which is a lot of sauce and a lot of cheese. So it's really not gonna look fancy, but it smells good and hopefully it tastes good. Bit of a, a blank canvas recipe, like you can kind of add things, you can take things away, do what you will with it. Just kind of the, the concept is there, kind of gives you the framework. With that, the raw onions, I'm curious how that's gonna go. I feel like they probably maybe should have been cooked <laughs> beforehand, but maybe the oven cooked them for me. We're about to find out once I taste it, but also like you could add in like olives, maybe put a little sour cream here on at the end. A lot of things you can do this recipe beyond just strictly what I've done. Like, I mean, even within it, you saw I added the black beans. That's not in the recipe, but just cheese and onions. It sounded weird. <laughs> so I added black beans. But let's give this a taste test and we will see uh, how it is. Try and get everything together. Yummy. The onions are, are still a bit raw, but they're like not too bad because they've been kind of like soaking in that sauce. So it gives it kind of like a crunch, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you don't get like a strong onion flavor. So I think they're fine how it is. If you don't like onions, just don't include them. Add something else or just, just do beans and cheese. But in terms of kind of how we did that, I think it's fine. Uh, I'm not gonna have any issue eating it is a, a better way to say it. I just don't know if I'm a fan of it yet. But we'll see kind of as things progress through. In terms of kind of the overall aspect of things, kind of was rushing through things. So the enchilada sauce, I probably should have taste tested before kind of finishing it. And it just, it just feels like it needs like a little bit more salt. All the other spices and flavors are really good in there. It's just the little salt level, not quite to where I would have liked it, but that is a problem that can easily be solved by tasting your food as you go. Um, which is a thing that I struggle with. I need to get better at doing that. Um, I always forget, I'm just like, follow the recipe, should be good. So that's just like a little bit of like where I can improve and then um, kind of shining a light on like potential pitfalls, to, you know, taste and fully season your, your food, pretty important. But yeah, overall, good, very simple. I don't know how long this took me. I, I think it, it's been like an hour, kind of start to finish, but that's with me like doing gear and stuff and then my light battery died because I hadn't charged it since the last time I filmed. So I had to kind of deal with all that stuff and like get chargers and things. So that definitely added a bit of time. This, if I wasn't doing filming or anything and I just kind of focused, probably like 30 minutes. I was just talking about that. I, you, you, you've been charging. <laughs> well, 
the light went out. And so that's probably just a good note, you know, we'll just, we'll just wrap things up. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, probably like 30 minutes and yeah, so like a, a solid weeknight meal, which I mean, I am making on a weeknight. It's just, I, I have all this extra stuff. So yeah, you can probably do this pretty quick. I mean, you could probably just throw in some like ground beef, stuff like that. I would say just enhance the filling is probably like what I would do in the future, but wouldn't really need to do much else to this. And on that note, because the light's out, it's, you know, curtain call, whatever. <sighs> Bye mom, still on dead. See ya.